Well, welcome back to Dobbo's Fishing Adventures. Uh, not a lot happening today, to be fair, but nice to be out here, enjoying it. That's the main thing. Um, that wind's picked up a little bit. Still flat calm, but um, certainly got a nip to it today. But yeah, I'm just going to uh, show you another addition to the uh, to Sea Vixen. Uh, just showed you the seat, and uh, you saw the rods and reels earlier. Uh, oh, I have had a dogfish. <laughs> Not bad for 10 foot of water, I suppose, but uh, the rods certainly perform well. As I expected, lovely and tippy. So now I'm really pleased with the rods, really pleased with the seat. So let's show you the extra addition to the electronics. Let's come back into the wheelhouse, so to speak, <laughs> under the canopy here. Right, there you go. So you're all thinking, why the hell have I just added another Axiom screen? Well, the reason being, when I'm uh, motoring at, uh, at, you know, when it's dark, uh, I do stand by the side of my console, the canopy's up, I've got radar, I've got everything on here, that's, that's, that's not the issue or anything, but when you're stood there, I've actually physically then got to look behind the console, you know, at the radar, plotter, blah, blah, blah. Mainly the radar. Now I'm stood there, I can visually see things, but when you take your eye off of something, just to look around, and then you come back, although it's on night mode and everything, so it is very, very dull, the screen, you momentarily just lose that focus, what you were just focusing on, say, Cardinal Boys, Marker Boys, uh, Pop Boys, Racing Markers, Racing Boys, whatever you like to call them. So, what I thought was... Let's add another screen up forward. And this morning coming out, it was pitch black. Uh, everything's running perfect. So on this screen here up forward, I actually had just solely the radar on. And it works brilliant. Absolutely superb. It's just literally a flick with your eyes there, flick back. You're not physically moving your body. You're not, nothing's glaring in your eyes from anything. So you're just keeping literally your eye on the road quickly look quickly back so it is good you can see everything uh clearly uh it's on night mode as well so you haven't got no glare from this screen either and it is literally a glance glance in front of you glance back glance glance so yeah so that is why i've added basically a third axiom so on the console i've got a nine mfd axiom i've got a seven rv axiom and now I've now got an additional 9 MFD. Now this isn't straightforward just to fit it. Well it is. But uh, you still need cables. You still need to link into HS5s. Uh, so everything all talks to each other. So yeah. Uh, I added a remote as well. And uh, a power on off switch. Um, but yeah. The only thing annoying. With Raymarine to be fair, is at the time I didn't realise, but you actually have to buy a flush mount kit if you're going to fit it into a moulding console that's flush mount instead of using the gimbal fins. So it comes free with your gimbal mounts, you know, your bracket and your two side knobs, that all comes free with it. But it's additional to buy a flush mount kit, which it's a lot of money you're spending. Um just to buy an additional unit to help you fit it, i.e. flush. So, bit of the bullet, that's another £60, just to buy the flush mount kit. Um, once again, uh, supplied by Hudson Marine in the handle. Um, David, uh, brilliant, brilliant service, brilliant sales, faultless. But yeah, so here we go. So, and But one good thing about the flush mount kit, it does actually come with an additional cover because you have to have uh it's got extra side bits for the flush mount kit to fit so you do come with another sun cover so if i take this off it actually looks it looks bigger than what it actually is but you've still got your nine inch so all your additional sides here doesn't come with the the gimbal mount thing so uh so I had to buy that, obviously. But no, uh, to be fair, it does look—it looks really nice, flush mounted. I'm—I'm I'm really impressed.
But once again, I've added another uh, RMK10. Um, that's three I've got on the boat for operating each screen. You don't have to buy one will operate all three screens. You press the button, it links to the other screen. Press another button. That's not the issue. Now, don't get me wrong. Axioms are absolutely superb, brilliant, phenomenal piece of kit. But the issue is... On an open boat like mine, if you're inside a proper sealed wheelhouse, it probably won't make any uh, difference to you, providing your hands are dry. But to turn this on and off when your hands are damp or the screen's damp is a nightmare. An absolute nightmare. So, I added another RMK10. So you got your power off. Now, for some reason, which is silly, you can still only power the screen off using an RMK10. Why they haven't done it when it's linked in there, you can press that button to power that up yet? I don't know. I'm hoping eventually they will uh, come to their senses, Rain Marine, so to speak, and uh, add this on. Hopefully it could only be a software update eventually, but uh, that would be fantastic. Um, now, to get everything uh, operating on here, is, oh, sorry, once again, very simple. All you've got to do... Just power that on. There goes my screen. So now slide that on. There we go. Rain Marine all on. Uh, the RMK is all on. Right, while I'm waiting for that to load. Now the trouble is where I've got so many things on this boat. Cameras, AIS, uh, radar, sounders all linked to, into the HS5 that I've got under the console. Trouble is, where I've got so many bits and pieces all linked into, uh, autopilot as well I've got, don't forget. Um, the problem I've got is, I had to buy an additional HS5. Oh God, more money. But, I bit the bullet, I had to buy it, otherwise it was, wasn't really operational. Right, so, in this unit here, moulding, should I say. Hold on, let's just take that off. Right, so up under here, basically, I've almost got like a third console on here now. If you look at my other videos, I've got my Garmin XSV 8410. So, in here, let's show you. I've now got an additional HS5. So the screen is linked into this HS5. The RMK10 is linked into this HS5. Now the only thing I had to do was basically my IP210 camera on the front of the boat. I had to take that out the HS5 that's in the console to bring back up into here because I had no ports left in the HS5 under the console. So, the link between the console HS5 and this HS5. So I bought an additional 10 meter cable um, to go from the console HS5 to this HS5. And as you see, it's all operational, it's all working. Uh, right, here's one for you. Uh, I didn't realize this. One, two three four five now number five hs5 this is the fastest speed one so this one has to link between this port and the same port on the hs5 in my console so hs5 under the console has number five basically port to port has to link the end one the number five port because that gives you the fastest speeds to link between all hs5s so this is what you must use don't think you can just put it into any of these ports yeah it's actually this is designed for the fastest speed to link between everything so you're getting the same performance on your first hs5 to your second hs5 here's your power so the power is all fused in here I've still got plenty of ports left, so I can still add additional things up here. Well, to be fair, this one here, 
I haven't got the fuse in yet, but I've also added another shore power socket. Now this is a 240 amp one, but I've just used the pos and neg on this because I have actually bought a portable diesel heater. One of the cheap Chinese ones, absolutely phenomenal piece of kit. Well, I haven't actually fitted it on here yet because I will add an exhaust to it, but it will mount, it will sit comfortably about here. Now I'm gonna change the cable on my uh, diesel heater uh, so I can have the actual uh, shore power socket attached to the K uh, to attached to the diesel heater so then that then will obviously uh, you unscrew this come on plenty of threads and then that will link into that so that will just go straight in you're all saying why the hell would I want something like that because look at it look at the size of it it's proper now i could just buy one of those cheap uh you know like a not a cigarette socket but you know what i mean just to go in here nah what why why do all this and then just have a silly plug so that's what i've done i've used that you don't have to trust me that's a hubble uh shore shore socket uh, nice uh, 316 stainless, so you know you ain't gonna get no corrosion. It is good, 100% watertight. It's not Mickey Mouse. It's not small. It's not light. Uh, the only thing I have to do, like I said, I have to change the cable on the diesel heater because it's too small um, to plug the actual saw shore socket into. So that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, yeah, getting back to all this. So that that's basically it there. So I've still got another. Two, uh, two spare fuses there I could link something else into if I wanted to. So what we've got here is, um, I think I'm, because I'm still on night mode at the moment. Uh, right, let's do that, right. Now it's, it says they're waiting for data master. Well, basically my data master is my nine axiom at my console. Hold on, how can I? Yeah, so it's, what. here we go. Right, so basically, you'll have to excuse the... Hold on, let me... So if I press the RMK, let's get... Uh, let's put this on today. Sorry, that's better. I'll then press that again. There we go. There we go. Sorry about that. Uh, it was still on there. So what I've done is I'm going to change... Uh, the Data Master's display is the one at the console. So I'm now going to change the Data, ma data Master screen to this one. So that's it. So, so basically, data master is this this one here now. Now, the only uh, other not issue I've got, but because of all the two screens back at the console, um, so when I power them up, it powers the other HS5 up. So at the moment, I have only got one HS5 working, which is this one up here. So basically, if I press chart now, as you can see. I've only got basic maps, so dare I say it, I'm going to have to invest in another Navionics Platinum uh, to put into this one here, because then I don't have to have all that on to operate this, as in, because the charts will link for all three. So I'm going to have this one, not as a standalone one, but I could use this then um, with just literally as is. So it gives me the basic options. So I can't put my radar on until I put um, that Axiom 9 back at the console on. Oh, there's fishing marks there. You don't want to see them. Um, so, yeah. So it's, it's brilliant. It's all working absolutely fantastic. But it's not quite a standalone screen because I do need my other, not the screen on, just the power on to the HS5. And then I can run my camera through this and everything. In fact, let's let's have a go. Right, so we're all on there. Now, if I power that on, I'll tell you what, I will put this one on. So, bear with. And now, if I just swipe that one there. There we go. So, now, now we're on here. This is now powering up all the HS5, everything that's linked into it. There's my 
Ramian Ax Axiom 7 RV. So that's got the sounder onto that one. These two nines are just MFDs. So basically they're just screens. Right, so that's powering up there. Now what will happen is now, when I've turned this one on, it will say searching for data master. So what I do is, purely because there, I shall now put the data master back onto this one here. There we go, multiple data masters found. Select the data master, select. There you go, oh, did you see that then? Right, so if I just now press this one back to the console screen, see, now I've got the detail chart back up. So now I can turn everything on here. Um, let me zoom in there. So I can now use this completely with radar. Let's go back into menu. Let's go press there, let's press camera. So there we go. So my IP210 is now working. So there you go, you can see Hillhead there, the shoreline and everything. So that's all working good. So now I can come back out and come back into there. Right, let's go, uh, what should we put on? I can't put the sounder on because I haven't got the RV on, the seven on. So let's go, let's go radar. Right, press on. Right, let's wait for all that to load. Let's just go back to this screen. Go back onto this one here. Once again, let me just, let me, so I've got my power on there. That'll give me the screen brightness then. There we go, now you can see. So, come on, take that off, there we go. So, I can come back to, I can have chart on this one. There you go, so I've got the same chart as on here. Right, now my ra radar's ready. So I can now transmit. Transmit that, there we go. Right, so I can come. There we go, there's Hillhead there. So I've now got the radar working on this one solely, or I could have all three screens with a radar on if I wanted to. Now everything is working on here now. So let's go, uh, what should we do? There we go, so we've got chart plotter, radar, and camera. Now you can change all your all your items around, you know, personalise it all. So, yeah, it's, it is a, an amazing piece of kit, I have to say. But as I say, this worked really well this morning. What I purely wanted it for was to run the radar through this one here. Does everything you want. Dashboard. I can also control my autopilot through here. Ah, right, there you go. Now you can see I've got the radar overlay is now on my chart as well. So I can still use this with chart at night with the radar overlay, but I personally just want to use this just purely for the radar. But yeah, uh, by the time you buy everything, it's not cheap. Um, yeah, it isn't cheap to be fair, but it is what it is, it's what I wanted and it's worked out, you know. For me, it's another safety feature having this screen here. Some people think, well, that's a bit extravagant, but that's down to them. Why not? That's what I say. Um, but yeah, so everything's all linked into it. Everything all works, as I say. I'm, you know, just zoom in and out on me with the RMK10. If you've got wet fingers, as I say, you know, it does save. So let's go through here. So that's what happens there. Yeah. So what do you want to go to? 
you can go to chart radar press that select so you're not actually touching nothing there you go the radar's still going right if i'd use that one there because that's there you got you can go straight on to put waypoint straight on let's put that back there so now i can zoom in and out with all on the different different segments so to speak there you go there's the isle of wight solent but yeah well i hope uh, i hope this this helps please subscribe please like uh, as i say there will be uh, a lot more info on everything as always but if you've got too many ports on your main hs5 you do have to buy an additional if they've been used up thanks for watching